bring to the stage now, all the way from Perth, who's we really appreciate his time and what he's done to, to get it to, to make it sort of available. Could you welcome please Scott Ladler? to uh, acknowledge the Aboriginal traditional owners of this area and uh, acknowledge their elders past and present and the young ones coming through. You all look pretty excellent today. It's great to see so many people out in such numbers. Um, but look, this was probably overdue, actually. It's probably time that we got together to have this little conversation. Can you think of a government at any time in Australian history that has been more thoroughly and more transparently owned by the top end of town. To no policy agenda of its own apart from that grafted on by media oligarch on the other side of the world. And the self-appointed policy geniuses at the Institute of Public Affairs. Anybody here from the Institute of Public Affairs? And look, if there's one thing that these people hate more than public education, public housing, public health, public transport, public ownership of essential services, it's public broadcasting. Yeah. Item 50 on the IPA's hit list, the laundry list that they handed to the other government after he won in September of last year. Item 50 reads as follows. Break up the ABC and put out to tender each individual function. Item 51. See, they're not done yet. Item 51, privatise SBS. The entire list reads as though the author really meant to say anybody not found to be on Team Australia will be privatised and broken up. Now, these ideas are tremendously popular within that tiny narcissistic clique of News Corp columnists and professional opinion hatters who tell the coalition front bench what to think. But it's pretty damn unpopular everywhere else. Yeah. It's so unpopular, Christopher Pine started a petition against it. Bless. Uh, the Nationals spent all night in budget estimates committees last Thursday threatening Mark Scott not to cut regional broadcasting. The other thing that we found out in estimates the other night is that the worst of the cuts are back-ended, so it kind of ramps up. So they already smashed them on the Australian network and that meant 80 good people had to walk out the door on this 1% so-called down payment. That damage is already done. The worst of the cuts announced during the week are actually back-ended out past the 2016 financial year, and so that got me thinking. The only thing worse than two more years of this amoral caricature of a government vandalising treasured national institutions would be another five years of it. So the most important thing that happens today are not the speakers and the stuff that you hear from people up here. They are the people that you meet and the relationships that you build and the phone numbers that you swap or the people you might know from the internet but never met in person. Because these are the people that we will be working with collectively to relegate these people to an unpleasant and unhappy footnote in political history. Look around at the people who have chosen to be here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon or all the other places that they could have chosen to be. Look around and make sure that you meet some people you've never met. So there's maybe what, 50,000 of us here? Say? The cops will say 200. There's a lot, there's a lot of us here, right? Um, and the fact is that we are not alone because this is happening in every city. It's happening in Melbourne tomorrow. They had a huge presence in Perth on Thursday. 
right across the country, big cities, smaller communities. Every community from Fremantle to Townsville, from Launceston to the top end, people are organising to challenge and confront and ultimately defeat the people who brought us these cuts. Whether it be people organising to challenge and confront this government's inhumane treatment of asylum seekers, the suicidal blind spot that they've got on climate change, and their unforgivable attacks on some of the most vulnerable people in our community. Collectively, we can organise and we can do this. We are going to relegate these people to a historic footnote. And when you open up the book in future and you find that little footnote at the bottom of the page, it's going to read like a warning to all future governments. Don't mess with auntie. Thank you.